All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a focus stack in Photoshop. So we're going to take some three photos from Lightroom, move them over into Photoshop and do a focus stack. In our last video, if you haven't seen that, be sure to go check it out. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. We, we go over two different waterfalls and a beautiful vista in the Washita Mountains. But in our last video, we did a focus stack of this beautiful waterfall called Trailhead Falls in the Washita Mountains. We did a focus stack, right? We took three photos of this waterfall. Now I'm going to show you how to put those three photos together in one so everything is in focus. We'll do that in Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to play a snippet of last week's video. So just to give you an idea, I just want you to know you know, how we took those three photos, what we did there. And that'll make more sense for when we get into Photoshop, you can see why we're putting them together a certain way. If you've seen that video, no worries. There's chapter marks below. Feel free to skip to the next chapter, go straight to the Photoshop portion. You don't have to, to watch that video again. But if you haven't seen it, or if you don't remember exactly how what we did in that video, definitely recommend to take the time to go ahead and watch through that so you can see actually how we actually took the photos. All right. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a marker shot in there with my hand. Try that again. I'm gonna focus all the way in the back there. F14, half a second, ISO 100. Two second timer. There we go. Got that shot. Now, I'm gonna do one on this tree limb here. Focus on that tree. Get that shot. Now, I probably don't need this shot, but I'm gonna do it just in case. I'm going to speed up my shutter speed. Up my ISO. And I'm going to try to get these leaves over here in this corner to where they're not blowing. And also these two limbs here. And not too bad, not too bad, that might work. Now I don't know if I need that shot or not. I may not worry about that too much. I don't mind a little bit of motion in the leaves. We'll see how it turns out in, in Lightroom. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now you'll notice I took three photos. One was of the background and it was at a half a second ex exposure half a second shutter speed rather for the waterfall. I wanted to get the waterfall very in, in motion. I wanted the waterfall to be in motion and I wanted everything to be focused back there, right? Um, the next one was of the tree, which is the foreground was, and I had to refocus for the tree, get the tree in focus because the tree was not in focus with the first picture. And then a final picture, I, I, I focused on the background again, right? So everything is in focus except for that tree. And I upped my shutter speed and upped my ISO. ISO. The reason I did that is because the wind was blowing so hard, the leaves were blowing, the, the, the limbs were blowing, and they were becoming blurry. So I wanted to capture them, them right in time um, just so they would be frozen and the leaves wouldn't be blurry. So basically, I have the, the focus in the background with the water and with the leaves being frozen, those two photos. And then I have the focus on the foreground with the tree. Now I want to combine those three photos in Photoshop as a focus stack. Let's jump in and start doing that. Before we do, there was another photo I took also. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but I put my hand in front of the camera and I took a photo. And then at the very end, I also did the same thing. Put my hand in front of the camera and I took a photo. Now, why did I do that? Well, recommend you learn to do that because if you get out there in the field and you start taking multiple photos, multiple photos, same shot, different, different viewpoints. Eventually it's really, really hard to know which photos go together. I've got three photos that go together and I need to put them in a focus stack. 
well, how do I know what those three, which three go together? Well, I've got my hand in one photo. I've got the first next three photos that I want together. And then I got my hand again. So when I get into Lightroom, that's how I know which ones are which, right? My hands are markers. Let's jump into Lightroom. All right, so in Lightroom here, I've got my three photos. You'll notice that one is, one is already processed. And for sake of time, for this video, I just did auto. But I'm going to show you, if I would have done more, I'm going to show you how to uh, copy those settings over to the other two photos. So I did auto on this first photo. The other two are still, they haven't been processed. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on the second one here. I'm going to press control, click on the third one. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose developer settings. I'm going to choose paste settings from previous, which was that first photo I already processed. Now it just applied the settings from the first photo. So now all, all three photos have the same settings. All right. So I've got all three photos with basic processing. I'm going to press, I'm going to click on each one while holding control down, make sure they're all selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to edit. Open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so I have all three of those photos loaded as layers in Photoshop. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to highlight each one. So you'll notice that you just basically click on one, you go to the bottom one here, press shift, and now all three are highlighted. You could also click on one, press control, click on the next one, press control, click on the next one. So now all three are highlighted. The first thing I want to do is I want to align these photos just in case there are micro movements when I took the shot. So I want to go up to uh, edit. I want to go to auto align layers. Now, as I do that, this box is going to pop up. I'm just going to leave it at auto. I'm just going to leave this basic settings there. It's auto aligning my layers. Now, all my layers are aligned correctly. Now, I want to figure out what's what. So if I look I want to find the one that's capturing, basically capturing everything frozen in time. Now I can tell by looking at the leaves, right? And looking at the water. So I'm going to zoom into these leaves. So let's look at the leaves. That's quite, that one's quite blurry. The one above it is quite blurry. If I get rid of these two and do the one at the bottom, and see it's it's less blurry. So that is the one that captured everything real quick in time, right? Frozen in time. There's no, it, it, there's no movement in the picture. So that's the one I want to use for the base. I'm going to use it for the base. It captured most of my picture frozen in time. And it also was focused on the background, right? The focus on the background. That's going to be on my base photo. It's on bottom already. So I'm going to leave it on bottom. That's perfect. Now the next one is figure out which one that is. Let's zoom out again. So this next one, I'm going to enable it. Now the water is smooth. If I go to the next one, the water is smooth here too. So I need to figure out out of these top two photos, which one is for my tree and which one's not. So let's, let's zoom in a little bit again. Zoom in on my tree. All right. So this top photo, what's more in, let me, What's more in focus, the tree or the background? I think the background is more in focus. Let's see. I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, yeah. So, so you'll notice the tree is very much in focus now. So this second middle photo, I think, is the tree. If I turn the top one back on, you'll notice the tree gets a little blurry and the background gets a little bit sharper. There we go. So now the tree is blurry and the background is more sharp. Right, so this top one is the background. All right, the middle one is the tree. Okay, so just to show you again, that's the tree in focus. That's the background in focus. That's the tree in focus. That's the background in focus. Hopefully you can tell the difference. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the tree on top. I'm gonna put the tree on top. So I'm gonna bring it up to the top there. All right, so I've got I've got it stacked the way I want to process it. The first thing I want to do is I want to process the tree. Now, how do I do that? So you've got to put those those mask put that masking on each photo, and with that masking, you're going to paint in only the portion of the photo that you want to see from that layer from that photo. Right? We're going to do that manually, 
but I need to add a mask to this photo. So I'm going to go down here and click on this button. You notice it added a white mask. Now white means that everything in the picture will be shown. Anytime there's white, it's going to be shown. If it was black, it would not be shown. I want everything to be black. I don't want anything in this picture to be shown. So I'm going to press Control I for invert. So now it's Option I, I think, on a Mac, but in Windows is Control I. So I, so now everything in that layer is not shown. It's like the, it's almost like the layers turned off. So I want to show just the tree. Now, if you accidentally click on the picture, you know the, the box is surrounded with a white box. The picture is surrounded with a white box. You don't want that. You always want to make sure when you're doing the painting that you click on the mask itself. Notice how there's a white box around it. So before you start painting your mask, you want to make sure that's the case. All right, so I've got the black mask and I want to paint in just the tree. So first, I need to make sure that my color is white. It is, right? And I need a paintbrush. And I'm gonna go up here, it's normal mode, opacity 100, flow is 100, that, that's fine. Now, if your paintbrush, and this happens a lot with me, sometimes it'll look like that, it's a little arrow. I can't tell how big that brush is. Just press your caps lock key. If you press your caps lock key, your circle will come back. It should now be a circle, all right? All right, so you'll notice the black is clicked. I'm gonna start painting in my white, all right? As I do that, you should start seeing a little bit of white show up on, on that black square box. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna paint it all in. Now, it doesn't look like you're doing anything. You should see it start being a little bit more focused. The tree is gonna be in focus versus out of focus. Because as we paint in that black, the white areas are gonna be shown in that picture. This picture had the tree more in focused. All right. Now, if you look over here to the right, you'll notice there's some whiteness on this mask. I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to click on it. There you go. You can actually see the mask you just created. I'm going to fill in this, this black some more. Now, I'm going to go back and click on the mask again. Click on the picture. Click on the mask. Now, I have, for this layer, I've got the mask done. I'm only showing the white portion. That white portion is this tree here. Right, that's the only thing that's painted in. That's the only thing that's coming through with that layer. So I'm done with this layer. Next, I'm gonna to go to the waterfall. Now, this layer is all about the waterfall. It's all about capturing that water at half a second. Turn it off. Now the water's actually frozen in time. It doesn't look quite as nice. It doesn't look like it's flowing. I, I, I prefer to make it look like it's flowing. So I'm gonna turn it back on. And now it looks more like it's flowing, right? So again, I just want to show the waterfall. I don't want to show everything else, just the waterfall. If you look at this picture, you see the leaves are blurry up here, right? See how the leaves are blurry? And that's from the wind, right? Now, from this picture, I don't want the blurriness of the limbs and the leaves and all that shaking in the wind, right? I just want to show the motion in the water, not the motion in the trees, right? So I'm going to put a mask on this one. Go down and click on the mask button, and I'm going to press Control I to invert it. So now I have a mask on this photo, on this layer, and I'm going to paint in just what I want to paint in. So I'm going to do just the water area. Notice how it slowly turns to be a bit more smoother water. I'm going to paint in that whole waterfall there. All right. I'm going to press Alt, click on the mask again, and there you go. You can see I've painted in just the waterfall. Make sure it's completely painted in. All right. So again, I'm done with that layer. So I've got two layers done. First layer, I've got my tree done. Second layer, I'm focused on the background, and I've got a low shutter speed, so the water looks like it's flowing. Of course, I didn't include the trees because the leaves are blowing. I don't want the leaves to be blurry, right? So now that I've done that, boom, my layer automatically shows through, right? If you look at the leaves here, so since I only show the waterfall from the second layer, well, my base layer is showing through. So my base layer is showing right here. And then my waterfall from my second layer is covering up the base waterfall. And then my tree from this layer is covering up the base tree. So it's basically stacking these views on top of each other.
right? So now I have all three photos working together to build one photo. I'm combining the, the different settings from the different photos to, to make it the one photo where everything is in focus, everything is frozen in time, except for the water you see motion there. Awesome. What's next? Next, I just click on the X. It's going to ask me, do I want to save it? Click yes. It's going to start saving it. It's going to import it back into Lightroom. So after it's done saving, it's going to import it back into Lightroom. It's adding a fourth photo now. You see I had three. Now I have four photos. My fourth photo is being saved into Lightroom. And you'll notice that it has a new name. It has not 293-edit.tif, TIFF. So your Photoshop file is saved as a TIFF. There we go. Okay. So here is my photo. My tree is in focus. My background is in focus. And my water has motion in it. And my leaves are frozen. So there's my base photo with everything added together with the focus stack done. Now I can continue processing it. So I, so at this point, I'd continue processing the photo to get it just the way I remembered it as I took the photo. That's how you do focus stacking from Lightroom to Photoshop and then back into Lightroom. Pretty simple stuff. And once you, I know it may seem like a lot, but once you get used to it, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, be sure to click that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. When you click the like button and subscribe, it also lets other people, it lets the algorithm know that, hey, you know, you got something out of this video that you liked it and it'll start sending it to other people so they can get something out of it too. So hey, if you have any questions, also leave me a message below. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again in the future. Talk to you later.